Hello and welcome back to Colonial Airstream. I'm Patrick Botticelli. Over the last three years, Airstream has been developing an adventure van. This is my own personal adventure van. It's a 1997 Airstream B190. It's got the V10 engine in it and gets seven miles per gallon. Well, the new Mercedes-Benz Sprinter chassis could get 16 to 18 miles per gallon. So I'm gonna to introduce to you the all new Airstream Interstate 24X. Built on the Mercedes-Benz 3500 series chassis, 170 inch wheelbase extended. And it is nine foot nine inches tall and it's 24 foot six inches long. Comes standard with four wheel drive. It's got a seven speed transmission and it has a 3.0 liter turbo diesel blue tech engine with 188 horsepower and 325 foot pounds of torque. This van also has the VB air ride suspension. With the air ride suspension, it's built to drive well on the highway, but this is also equipped with Goodyear Wrangler all-terrain tires, so when you're driving off the highway, it's an exceptional ride. Airstream Rhino lined the exterior. It's got a, a heavy paint on the front that if you scuff through some uh, brush, it's not gonna scratch the paint. It has the front lip here, the air dam lip here, but you got enough ground clearance to take it off-road. And then there's large aluminum running boards down the whole entire side, and the rhining lining continues down the whole entire side of the coach. Comes with mud flaps, it has side view cameras, has a rear view camera, and if you look up top, there is a big spotlight that goes across the roof area, and there's spotlights on the side, so you can flip them on when you're pulling up in the trail uh, to get a better view. There's two spotlights in the back that allow when you're backing into your site to see and illuminate the area at night, or when you're parked, you could use them for camping. There's a large roof rack on the roof, and it has a 14 foot long power awning with uh, two arms and a seismic sensor. And the uh, awning has an LED light strip built into it as well. On top, there is 400 watts of solar. That's 300 watts dedicated to the two Battleborn 100 amp hour each. That gives you a total of 200 amp hours of uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. And there's a 100 watt panel dedicated to the engine battery. Let's take a look inside. <clears throat> it's got a power sliding door. There's an insect screen here uh, that uh, protects this galley area from insects. There's an accordion insect screen here. And Airstream builds this in-house, so it's greatly engineered. There's a step well here, and it's got vinyl floor, very durable vinyl flooring throughout with a, a aluminum track here for extra grip. There is a table mount here on the side, and it has a lagoon table that's standard up front here that you could remove and put outside. So let me go grab that. And this just slips right on and locks in place. And now you have an extra table outside, and you can adjust this up and down as needed. Also here, there's a heavy duty grab handle to get in a lot easier. On the uh, switch wall here, we have a main battery disconnect. Next to that, we have our ceiling light switches that are dimmable, they're all LED. The awning lights that are built in up top here. The floodlights on the side here. And the undercarriage lights. There's lights that illuminate the undercarriage at night. Beautiful. Awning is power. We'll just hit this button here, let it come out. And you can see the LED lights are built in on the awning box. And that awning box is uh, uh, black, which gives it the matching look to the body. 
And the material here is a vinyl material. And it's got red stitching built into it. Give it the same look as the seats. The color scheme in here is called Red Rock. So this comes with one exterior color, one suspension, which will be four wheel drive, air suspension standard, and one standard interior decor. So the only option is a front mattress system that's for children, one child could sleep there, and you could buy that from the parts department. These chairs swivel around, both driver and passenger, and then you could utilize this table inside. In the cab area, there's a heavy duty rubber mat that you could pop out, it's three pieces, allows you to hose it out when you get the mud and grime inside. There's the MBOX stereo system that has GPS and radio control, and there's a separate radio, Bluetooth radio, for the back section with some really awesome speakers in the back door. These chairs swivel around, we saw how that one works. They're power, so I set memory setting number three to the position that the seat needs to be in so when it swivels it doesn't hit any of the trim work. And there's a lever up front that allows it to swivel all the way around. And these kick out. If you have longer legs or want to lounge, you could tilt it back pretty far. But very durable material on these seats. And uh, again, it's used in the Airstream base camp. There's a, a ledge up here to store things. You have USB on the side of the uh, visor area. These flip down and there's mirrors in each one of them. And then look at this side door here. Insect screens on the driver and passenger doors. Uh, these just slip right up in and you close the window up into a little groove and that gives you some ventilation and some protection against insects and from people getting in the vehicle. Over here, we have a roof locker cabinet that houses the heat for the battery. So this has the lithium iron phosphate batteries when the temperature gets below a certain threshold. Uh, you should have the battery heaters on to heat them up first before you put a charge on them. Uh, this is uh, prepped for the Airstream connected Wi-Fi antenna. So the antenna is there, the wiring's there, you just need the router. But if you do that aftermarket on the dealer level, there's a key that you can turn the Wi-Fi on and off. This has the new Quiet uh, 2500 LP Onan generator. It's their inverter series. And uh, this is the controls here. You could also set an auto start on this generator. Over here we have a 2000 watt Xantrax inverter. That inverter system will power all outlets in the coach and your microwave, uh, but you'll, in order to use the air conditioner, you'll need to start the generator be plugged into shore power. Uh, this is the Victron solar uh, controller here for the 400 watts of solar that's on the roof. This has heated tanks. The black tank is in the body, and that's heated when you have your heating system on inside the coach. And the gray and freshwater tanks are underneath the body, and they have heat pads built onto them. And you can flip this switch, and it'll give you about a 7 degree boost in temperature inside the tank. Uh, the tank sizes is 23 gallons for the freshwater tank, 24 gallons for the gray waste tanks, that's shink and shower waste, and it has 11 gallon black waste tank, that is for your toilet waste. To monitor the waste, there is a battery monitor here. You can see how much fresh water you have, which is at 4% right now. Gray waste is at 0%. Black waste is at 0 And the LP is at 53%. On board, there is a 41 pound LP cylinder, and that powers your generator. That will run a generator for over 30 hours. That powers your cooktop that's on board. And the heating system is a little bit different. The heating system is the Timberline heating system. That's a hydronic heating system. And it's like a tankless water heater, but also the main cabin here heating system. And there's duct work throughout the coach. Runs on the same diesel tank, which is a 24 and a half gallon tank that Mercedes-Benz Sprinter gives you, up to the quarter level. So you have anything from a quarter and above to run the heating system. And it uses a 12 volt fan to push the glycol through the lines. We'll take a look at uh, some of the duct work when we get to the back later. And then this has a powder control system which uh, uh, when you're plugged into shore power, if you're only plugged into 20 amp, it will prioritize uh, electrical items based on your usage so you don't overload the system. 
It's also prepped for satellite, so if you wanted to do a satellite receiver, it has uh, the loop here, and if you wanted to put that in. Not too many people are doing that anymore, they're mostly streaming movies. And then it has an antenna booster because up top there is a antenna that gives you television reception. Now there is no television inside this coach, but it is prepped for one if you decided to install one aftermarket in the back. That's the antenna booster and the cable that runs out of it. Carbon monoxide and smoke detector here. This uh, table that we had outside, you just adjust these little levers and you could get this to come around. You could have two people sitting here eating. I could bring it up and down in height. There's duct work here on the floor that uh, allows the heat from the furnace to come through. The control here for the air ride suspension. Now the air ride suspension is automatic, but if you are driving through a parking lot and you need to raise or lower the back end uh, temporarily, you could use the controls here to change that. There's an inverter circuit outlet here. Uh, that you would need your inverter on to uh, power, but if you're plugged into a campground's power, that will come on, or if you have your generator on, that will power that outlet. And then there's four USB charge ports next to it. Airstream is very generous with USB power because we know our adventure buyers have lots of gadgets, whether it's bicycle lights, GPS, all sorts of things that run on USB, while well, you could charge them throughout the coach. Over here, we have the wardrobe closet. Now you notice there's shelves. Not a lot of our adventure buyers are bringing a suit or a dress with them, but um, if you decided to, you could remove these shelves and you could hang things from here. You could neatly fold your clothing and have a shelf dedicated. And then this is dedicated for pantry or food storage. So you do have three drawers that come out that you could utilize. Down here, there's a drawer that comes all the way out, full extension. All the construction is plywood with laminate, no stickers, no particle board, and they all have a heavy duty J latch to keep them shut when you're driving. Another furnace duct here down at the floor, and then we also have some aisle lights throughout to illuminate the aisle at night. Over here by the door, we have an electrical outlet. We have a fire extinguisher cut into the cabinet. Moving up, the undercarriage lights, floodlights, awning lights, dimmer for the ceiling, ceiling lights, and main battery disconnect to shut the battery down when you're done using the coach. The solid surface countertop has a gray tone to it, but they inset a red piece that has backlighting, so it makes a really sharp look at night. Has a solid surface sink cover and a stainless steel sink with a separate mowing faucet and a sprayer here. What I love about these Sprinter vans is when you open this sliding door, you have a beautiful view all the way out. But if you notice throughout the whole entire coach, all the way around, there's a lot of windows. Uh, and all those windows have privacy curtains built into them, which I'll show you in a little bit. Moving down the galley, there's a two burner gas cooktop. So you just pick which burner you want on, press ignite. You do this one the same way, turn it to light, turn it on. And while you're cooking to vent outside, up here on the roof, there's a max air fan. So you could turn the fan on and off. It has a manual lid, which is cool because it has a cover built into it. So if it's raining out, you can still have this open as a vent. You don't have to worry about water coming in or any rain sensors. You turn the fan on, there's four different speeds. And this pulls a high volume of air. I use this solely in my adventure van. I rarely use the generator, I rarely use the air conditioning. I probably would use the air conditioning on a day like today. But this fan is very efficient and you could shut it off and then turn it down when you're done. But I leave mine open all the time. Over here in the galley, this flips down so you can put the sponge and a brush in it. And then instead of having big cabinet doors, we know our venture buyers to have duffels and large items that they want to put in. So they put this netting here. So this is a pretty big space. You have four, to, uh, three total that go across the front here. And then underneath them, you have large drawers as well. And this one comes out a little bit further. On this side, we have a 6.8 cubic foot 
Novacool refrigerator and freezer. And the controls here are on the side. You could put one through seven. These shells are removable if needed. I have one of these in my Airstream and I love it. I switched over from the propane one. It runs greatly efficient, doesn't throw off any heat. Uh, the fan is very quiet in it and it uses very little battery power to run. At the top is the vents for the refrigerator just to vent any heat that builds up back there. There are locks on the doors. The freezer's a drawer, I love this. It's much more efficient having a drawer style freezer uh, because when you pull it out, all the cold air stays inside. Okay, you can really load it up. Moving back here, we have the bathroom area. So this is a wet bath. This is identical bathroom setup that the Grand Tour, Airstream Interstate Grand Tour has. Same position, same location, different laminate. It's got a gray laminate here. Flush lap, so when you walk down the aisle, you don't bump your pants loops on the handle. And then it has a porthole style window on the door. And the lighting control for the bathroom is over here, over the galley. And there's other switches here as well. We have the galley lights, the accent light that's built into the cabinet, and then we also have the water pump switch. So I could turn the water pump on, that demand pump pumps up water pressure. Once it feels a drop from pressure, uh, when you kick on a faucet, it will kick back on and then shut off. And in the shower, there is a bathroom fan that you can push straight up and push the button, and that will allow you to vent stale air outside. Also in here, we have a mirror with magnification, so this flips around. There's a clothesline that pulls across. It snaps in, you can lock it, and you could dry some light items. I love that feature. This is the shower wand that's on the wall right now, but it retracts and becomes your bathroom sink with two different spray patterns here. Over here on the back wall, there's a little rack. There's a heat duct here, and then there's a sensor here that when you enter the bathroom, this halo glows. Instead of having to turn on the big bright lights, it turns it on so you can see what's going on. I just put one in my Airstream and that's all I use for my bathroom now. I love it. And it shuts off automatically once it doesn't detect uh, uh, motion. And then the shower curtain comes unsnapped from the wall and pulls across and Velcro's in place, and that just protects this laminate from getting wet. Not that it can't get wet, but there are seams here. It prevents water from getting out. And what I found is using small hand towels to dry off is better than a full-size residential towel. Uh, they dry a lot quicker, and there's a lot more room to use them. It has the Dometic toilet with a foot pedal here on the side. So you put it partially to fill the bowl up, all the way down to flush it. And when you're driving around, you only have about an inch of water in the bowl, so you don't have to worry about splashing around. The shower pan here has a shower drain built into the floor. And there's a toilet paper holder that uh, is water resistant, so when you're showering here, your toilet paper doesn't get soaking wet. On the back of the door, there's also a little towel bar here for the small towels that we talked about. Up top, we have a 13,500 BTU Coleman Mach Quiet Air Conditioner. Uh, it has different fan speeds, and you'll need to run the generator or be plugged into shore power to run this. And then there's intake grates here, and then uh, the air flows out the sides here. This has the contour regular microwave. Uh, it's about 0.08 cubic foot. Uh, it's big enough to heat something up quickly and that runs off your inverter system. These blinds here, these shades that we call them, privacy shades, just flip down and they Velcro in place. It's that simple. Or they're completely removable. If you didn't want them on board, you could just rip them out. And then there's little pockets built into them for all your little gadgets. Uh, there's, I have pockets similar to this in my Airstream and I utilize every one of them. And then you just flip them up when you're done. The back area has its own separate ceiling light control for the bedroom area. And this is the large king size bed. And this bed system you could just use as a regular twin by taking the cushion off and laying down this way. Uh, but if you want to set it up as a large king bed, let me show you how. 
So for to set up the king bed, first thing what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open some windows because it's a little hot out today. These bottoms just crank right out. And then you can use your fan or turn on the air conditioner. So we got all four of these that open. And then what you could do is you could pop open the back doors. And you could roll down this screen here. So if you're worried about insects getting in, there's a rear screen system that zips down all the way to the floor. And it has a heavy bar on the bottom that keeps it in place so the bugs don't get through. And now you could have that awesome cross breeze. And man, did that just make a difference. Up top here to make the bed, Airstream gives you some bed supports. And look at the nice stuff that Airstream did. It, even the attention to detail, they made a special case for it. It's all sewn up, got a nice zipper on it, and it's got foam inside. So you don't hear these things clanking around when you're driving. So I, if I was traveling this by myself, I would just use it as a twin bed. I don't think I would make it into a king bed just for one person. But if you wanted that opportunity to make it into a king bed, you take out all these supports, all right? And you basically do lift up, slide it in, snap it in place. Same thing here. One here. Now that you have all your supports in, you grab the backrest that has a hard back to it that will support across these rails. And you put it in place. Same thing on this side. And then you lift it up and you squeeze it all together. And if you notice, there are four seat belts back here. There's two on this side and two on this side. So this is a four passenger vehicle and you could, this is big enough, you could actually sleep four people back here, mom, dad, and two little kids, if you really wanted to. What's great about this is you can leave the bed set up all the time if you wanted to. But if you want to convert this area into dinette, those, that lagoon table has two more tracks here that you could slide it into. So you could put it on this side or this side and center it in the middle. Up here, instead of having a regular roof locker, they have these little lofts. And uh, this L-track here, these snap right in. You just push the little button and line it up and lock it in place. And this holds this locker in place. And on the bottom, there's a clamp system built into it. So you could take this whole entire aluminum structure roof locker out. And then if you look on the wall, there's L-track here, there's L-track here, even here. And you could have your mountain bike vertical here or you could put it in this position or you could tie other gear there's so many things that are compatible with these tracks and if you notice there's also tracks on the floor and they have these little rubber covers so your pinky toe doesn't get stuck in here and you don't drop dirt and debris that just covers it up airstream puts them in so you got two tracks here and you got two tracks towards the front if you lift up each one of the beds there's storage so this storage right here I happen to have the power cords in, some tools. This one lifts up, and that gives access for a technician to get to the Xantrax inverter. And you can see, it's all plywood with laminate, nicely routed on the CNC machine. Uh, they do great stuff, very tight fits on the Airstream products. This one lifts up, and this is carpeted. This is right over the wheel well. There's also additional storage here. They have these really nice vent grates made out of aluminum to vent the inverter compartment. On this side, same thing. This one lifts up here. You got two more storage compartments. And then this one lifts up as well and goes right over the wheel well. That area is carpeted. We have your fuse box and breakers built in right here. And then the electronic battery disconnect, you could manually do it if you needed to. Propane leak detector, aisle light, and another electrical outlet. On the walls, there are some reading lights that are different brightness that you could change. And there's a USB charge port built into them. And they're flexible, you could put them in a lot of different angles. Matching tracks on this side. And check out these blinds. There's uh, different ways you could use them, but right now I have it 
fold it up and fold it over. But you could fold it partially down like that, or you could fold it fully down and have the same pockets that the front one had. Another matching roof locker up here. Back to this side, this is just the owner's manuals and bag. They give you a portable tire inflator. So if you're gonna drive this onto the beach and you deflate the tires down to your recommended 13 PSI, you could pump your tires back up when you're ready to hit the road again. Uh, this will run off a regular DeWalt, DeWalt lithium uh, battery pack if you have one, or this plugs into a 12 volt socket or an electrical outlet on board. And then they also give you an item that's waterproof that you could store some, it's like a little safe that you could put in here. On the ceiling, you'll notice some more L-Track, aluminum interior finish, so when you're loading gear in and out and dust and dirt, this stuff's really easy to wipe down instead of a vinyl type uh, headliner. On the back of the bathroom wall, these bolts here are the prep for a TV bracket. If you ever decided to install a television aftermarket, there's an inverter circuit right next to it. This is a temperature sensor for the heating system that's on board, which is the Timberline. And what's cool about this, it runs off a of diesel, but it also runs on electric. So if you're gonna run on heat, you got your, your uh, uh, diesel portion of it, which isn't gonna come on today because it's way too hot. And then uh, you could adjust your temperature by your hand here. I just heard it kick on temporarily and then you could also boost it with electric but you don't want to turn that on if you don't have water in the system to heat the water you put on the water setting and uh, there's no adjustment on temperature it, it already preheats the water um, and uh, gives you about 125 to 130 degree temperature out of your faucets and then you could do different settings uh, on this. Uh, this is something that's used on other adventure vans in the market and was well received so now Airstream includes it as well on this model. One last thing I want to show you before we head outside for some more cool items is the rear privacy shade. So you roll this down and that blacks out this area. You got this one, you got that one. This whole back area is going to be dark. What about the cab area? Well for the sliding door and the front cab area in this overhead roof locker, there are some removable panels that go across the windshield, driver and passenger door, and down the sliding door. So you can really get it pretty dark in this van. Uh, this cabinet's carpeted, so whatever you put in here, if it's moving around, it's gonna be very quiet. And you look at this cabinet structure, it's all extruded aluminum, very durable material here. Uh, so you don't have to worry about staples and screws coming out. This is a uh, aluminum structure. I just love these running boards. The, the wide track, you can lay some things on it if you're out camping and uh, because of the way they're made it's easy to spray and power wash the mud off of it. Engine exhaust comes out here to the side. This is rated to get 16 to 18 miles per gallon. It's got that excellent turbo diesel six-cylinder blue tech engine that seven-speed transmission. Like I mentioned in the beginning, it's got the 170 inch wheelbase. This is a dual rear wheel because it's a 3500 series chassis. And the tires they're currently using are the Goodyear Wrangler All Terrain. And uh, they're 16 inch rims. It's a profile of 215-35 R16. Rider lining continues down to this compartment here that's made out of aluminum. This flips down and it gives us access to fill the propane tank to bleed the propane. There's a light that illuminates this compartment at night. And there's a quick release port here. So if you got a little portable low pressure barbecue grill, you could snap this in, turn on the gas valve and, uh, and fire up your grill. And then the propane system, instead of having a regular lever on it to turn on and off, it has electronic uh, solenoid built into it that allows you to power up the propane. Over here is a regular electrical outlet. And there is a ZAMP quick disconnect port. So if you wanted to add more solar and do some portable panels, this thing's parked in the shade, you can plug in a portable solar panel on this side or the other side of the coach. They give you two back doors. <clears throat> Swing pretty far around. 
you can unzip your screen and shade and you can roll it all the way up. I'll just tuck it up temporarily to give us access to our rear docking lights that are up there. So you can turn those on and off when you're uh, at back here working on your mountain bike or setting up camp. Uh, you also have an electrical outlet here and there is a 12 volt charge port built in for that air compressor. On this side here, there is a spray hose. So this is plumbed right into the tank and you could wash off your bike or your boots when you're done hiking. And that quick disconnects and comes out and you can store it in the pocket here in the back door. Up on the top of the doors, there's Resonato speakers. There's four on this side and four on that side. You have a dual backup camera system, one for the Mercedes stereo, one for the aftermarket, one that goes over the rear view mirror that you can leave on the whole entire time when you're driving. Down here, we got a hitch receiver. This tows up to 5,000 pounds with a 500 pound tongue weight rating. It has the rear bumpers built into the hitch, so if you bottom out somewhere. And then it also has a seven way trailer plug so if you got an aftermarket brake controller, you could tow a travel trailer, maybe a base camp, behind your Airstream Interstate X. On this side of the coach, has a smart plug connection. So there's an upgrade from a regular shore power cord that you're familiar with. It has better contact, so the power cord won't heat up when you're plugged into shore power. This is another ZAMP port here. And the dual exhaust on this side, one is for the quiet generator, and the other one is for your diesel heating system. Up above, we have the city water connection that will supply water to all your faucets when you turn them on based off of campground water pressure. And then moving forward, we have the potable water fill for the 23 gallon fresh water tank. Directly below this tank, there's a drain plug built in so you can drain it down when you're done adventuring. And then in this compartment here, it has utilities to empty the waste. So it has the black valve, the gray valve, these will open the gates to discharge the waste, has the macerator pump system, uh, service light so you can see at this area at night, cable inlet, you can run through this port here, and the reel, which we're gonna pull out in a moment, is power so you can roll it back in when you're done using it. Let's go take a look at that compartment. In the lockable compartment, we have the macerator hose reel you can pull out. There are a rubber donut and fittings. So this is for uh, like a three inch waist. You could screw that in. And then what you do is you take this cap off and you replace it with this one. And you can screw this on, it tightens it. Now you can screw it in at the campground. If it doesn't fit, you could use the rubber donut in this one. Uh, lots of different options. And then once you're all set up, you open this up. Then you open your wastegate, starting with the black first. Once that's open all the way, you're going to turn the waste pump on. Now obviously you wouldn't do this on the ground, but this is for demonstration purposes. Once that's done, you're going to turn the pump off, and then you close your wastegate. Then you're going to open the gray waste, turn on the pump again. And that's your sink and shower waste that's going to flush out and clean this hose out. When you're all done, you close this up and then you roll in the hose. And you, sometimes you have to feed it back and forth so it doesn't bunch up. And then you put this item in here and you put your little fittings away. I'd recommend using rubber gloves. Off to the side here, there's a black tank flush. So while you're emptying the black tank and you have the pump on and the gate open, you can hook a garden hose to this fitting and under pressure will spray the walls of the tank down and discharge it through your macerator pump. You don't want to hook any type of hose up to this unless your black tank is open and your macerator pump is on. The shower hose we used in the back, you could remove it and snap it on the side. And then you have cotton cold water you could pump through here if you want to hose off your dog or your feet when you're done at the beach. And what's nice is this running board could be utilized to store some of your items. Up front here, you get a good view of the outside of this vent here for the front windows. I wouldn't recommend driving with them in, but if you're parked somewhere. Fuel doors here for the 24 
gallon diesel tank. This is ultra low sulfur diesel fuel that they use. There's some covers for the front light bar that you could snap on for protection. Some canvas covers here as well. Lots of room in these doors to store some gear, cup holders inside, and everybody's familiar with the Mercedes-Benz uh, Sprinter chassis, but Airstream loads them with a lot of features. They pretty much check off all the boxes. So this has the Parktronic, the collision avoidance, blind spot detection, adaptive cruise control on board, and many, many more, including the power seats and the heated seats. Under the driver's seat, there is a solar controller for the dedicated 100 watt panel that charges the engine battery. The engine battery is underneath the floor here. There's a toolkit on the passenger side to gain access if you ever needed to get to this battery. The Battleborn lithium iron phosphate batteries are all the way in the rear of the coach underneath an aluminum battery box. Also back there is the generator and the propane tank. Come around, you can see this has the steel Mercedes-Benz rims painted black. Gives a nice stealthy look. LED headlights. Hood lifts up, prop rods here on the side. Fresh air cabin, filter built in, air filter, master cylinder, washer fluid, jump start port. You can push this in, positive lead here, negative lead here. And then there's emergency inflation system built in. If you had a failure in your VB air ride suspension, you could pump up with uh, air with using a regular pump. Oil filters right here. And this is the radiator overflow and the def fluid fill. This uh, van has up to a 20,000 mile oil change interval. We recommend doing it every 20,000 miles or once a year, whatever comes first. On the front bumper here, there's a step that's built in. You can grab underneath the hood, come up here, and you can clean all the mud and grime off your windshield, all the bugs. And that's a good view. Now you can see the Airstream branded roof rack system that's up top. And they utilize every inch of that roof. Uh, over the solar panels, there's crossbars, so you can load up some gear that's on the roof and put a kayak or canoe up there, a stand-up paddleboard. Now I know you have a lot of questions. One of them being the price. The MSRP is $215,500 and that includes the $1,650 national destination charge. There will be another option available that will be leveling jacks. So you want it to park at a campsite, there's hydraulic leveling jacks that will level you out. Those are gonna be $6,900. The front mattress is available through parts for $1,150. This Airstream is available at Colonial Airstream on display all summer long. If you want to come down and take a look at one before you place an order, we'd love to have you. Again, this is Patrick Botticelli with Colonial Airstream. Our website is colonialairstream.com. Telephone number is 800-265-9019. And make sure you follow us on social media, Colonial Airstream on Instagram and Facebook. See you soon.